Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. As the title of this video would imply, we're going to be discussing further RDNA 3. The dust has settled somewhat after AMD's event yesterday, where they revealed the 7900 XT and the 7900 XDX. Now, there were a couple of very interesting announcements at the event. The release date is the 13th of December, and the pricing is very, very, very impressive. It's 899 US dollars and 999 US dollars, respectively, the higher end, of course, being the flagship. But there was still a lot of ambiguity, as one would expect as we go into one of these events. No, not all of the questions are answered, and we still have a lot of questions regarding the performance data. But since the event has now cleared up, there have been some interesting posts online, and we can start to dig into exactly what AMD will be able to achieve with these next generation of products. And one thing I would like to clear up first is some information regarding the clock frequency. For quite a long time, we were hearing it was going to be over 3 gigahertz that AMD would be able to achieve with the RDNA 3 architecture. I put out the rumors, and I certainly wasn't the only one. But... Well, it didn't hit that. In fact, it was just 2.5 gigahertz, although there are two clock frequencies with RDNA 3, basically the front end as well as the as well as the shaders themselves. Now, interestingly, um PC World, I'll leave a link to their video, essentially have stated that the architecture itself is capable of hitting up to 3 gigahertz. Basically, it's designed to do so. And it seems that AIB models can definitely hit higher clock frequencies. Now, I've been doing a little bit of digging, and I've personally heard up to 2.8 gigahertz is quite achievable for certain AIB cards. Of course, they would be at a higher TDP. So the base for N31 7900XTX, well, that's 355 watts. And this is most likely going to be 450 with two, well, sorry, with three 8-pin power connectors. So yeah, according to AMD themselves, they did actually design the architecture to hit 3 gigahertz. It was designed to scale up to 3 gigahertz. Now, I cannot verify what I'm about to say, but a couple of sources did reach out to me after the event, and I was basically told that the original targets of RDNA 3 were 3 gigahertz, and some internal samples were hitting 3 gigahertz, but they didn't feel like it was stable enough across, well, let's just say enough silicon. So in other words, they wouldn't hit the yields that would be ideal, so they decided to scale back the clock frequencies. Therefore, the AIB models, the halo skews, basically, you know, the creme de la creme of the silicon, those are what's going to scale at higher speeds. Now, personally, I can't verify that. It's also possible that all of this time, we were just hearing about the AIB models that were hitting 3 gigahertz. It's very difficult to know with all of this. And honestly, when one thing we can all agree is that, well, none of these companies like leaks getting out, so misinformation is often spread anyway. However, it would be very interesting if that was the case. Personally speaking, I'm going to be very intrigued to see what the scaling is like for RDNA 3, especially considering the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte is actually a little less power in terms, sorry, a little less in terms of power consumption. I think it's like, free, this is from memory, I think it's 320 watts. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how the two scale versus, you know, power limits and all of that stuff. At the end of the day, um, I'm sure that you're going to get like the, you know, the LIBs that just push things to the absolute limit. And again, I've heard 2.8 gigahertz is quite achievable for AIB cards. But what I'm not certain of if, is if that is a software limit or if it can go higher. Again, there is a ton of ambiguity at the moment. So just put this under, you know, just file this as, huh, that's interesting. But AMD themselves have confirmed 3 gigahertz is designed by the architecture it's going to be very interesting to see how rdna3 scales given the clock frequency and another thing that i would like to discuss actually is the performance data now let's just be honest any event from just about any company whether it's microsoft whether it's sony whether it's a cell phone manufacturer intel amd nvidia you know there's going to be some marketing BS, and you know that some of the figures are going to be held back. And in the case of RDNA 3, there was no exception. There were very few actual hard numbers. They put some figures out um, in terms of frame rate, but this was primarily revolving around things like with FSR enabled. And even with FSR numbers, it's like what quality settings were you guys using, those type of things. 
Uh, they weren't exactly super transparent about that. And this is not me criticizing uh, AMD in isolation for this. Again, a lot of companies do the same thing. But they also, of course, were thing saying things like it was 1.5 times faster or 1.7 times faster than RDNA, uh, RDNA 2, the 6950XT. Now, as a reminder, we were hearing it was up to two times faster than the 6900XT. So it's going to be interesting to see what the AIB models, which presumably are going to have the higher clock frequencies, can get and whether they can get up to the two gigahertz, uh, sorry, two times speed that was the rumor. Now, one thing I did yesterday in my video is I basically took one game um, using the tech power up figures and I basically took the 6950XT results and I basically multiplied them by 1.5. And then I used that to essentially extrapolate what the performance figures would be versus the RTX 4090. But a couple of folks on Twitter actually went much further. So we have Harakazi as well as Rogame. And I just want to go through some of these figures because I'm sure you'll agree they're really intriguing. So let's start things out with Cyberpunk. This is, again, kind of difficult to be 100% certain because the systems might be slightly different. For example, in the RDNA free test setup, they were using a 7900X, but TechSpot for their numbers, they were utilizing a 5800X 3D. So that does mean that obviously AMD's RDNA free setup is a little better. But according to what their information is, any, sorry, according to this anyway, we're looking at the 7900 XTX basically having an identical frame rate to the 4090. The same thing could also be said for Metro Exodus 4K ray tracing high. It's essentially a wash between the two results. Next, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare. This is something that Rogaine put together. He was taking the numbers from hardware and boxed. And again, we are looking at different CPUs. It's the 7900 X. Um, versus with um, the 7900 XTX that was getting 139 FPS at 4K with max settings versus the 3900K and an RTX 4090, which was getting 139 FPS again at the same settings. If you're starting to get a little bit of a pattern here, well, I don't blame you. Um, another couple of comparisons, again, using hardware unboxes numbers, Rogame did some extrapolations. Cyberpunk 2077, 4K max settings, 83 FPS versus 83 FPS of the 4090. Watchdog Legion. I think that was the game I compared against yesterday. But I'm not 100%. Uh, again, they they managed to get also kind of similar results. So it does seem like the 1490 here is a little bit faster. So what do I think of all of this? Well, it's still very difficult to know, guys, exactly how all of this compares. For one, the processors which are being tested are different. And for two, we don't know if the same area is being tested. As you probably know, just a small variance in even where the camera looks can be a huge impact in performance, let alone a different area, a different level, whatever. And there's also some variance in some open world games, of course, like, you know, NPC density or time of day or whatever. So again, this is cool stuff. I personally, now I'm about to enter speculation territory. Do not take this as a leak. Do not take this as confirmation. Do not take this as anything other than me just saying random crap. Personally, I think the N31, the reference models, are going to be slower than the 4090. I think that that's fine, honestly. I'm actually okay with that. I do think that the custom AIB cards are going to be higher in clock frequency and probably closer. I think NVIDIA are going to have a, rest, uh, sorry, a ray tracing performance. God knows what's going on with FSR 3. I'll get to that in just a second. What I think, though, is that it's going to be very interesting to do comparisons on a game-by-game -game basis, and I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of discussion of which card is best. Now, what I'm uncertain about is the, well, the availability of the cards. I am getting the feeling that there could be some shortages of the RDNA 3 based cards. Curiously, WCCF Tech put out an article today to state that the RTX 1490 has basically sold 100,000 units. I'm pretty sure this is right. I heard that the availability of the 1490 at launch was absolutely nuts, like way, way more than, you know, previous flagship cards. And it sold out. I don't want to give the number because my source asked me not to. But I think that NVIDIA just basically just, they were shocked. Um, speaking to some, several people within the company, they were all really surprised at just how fast the cards sold out. 
Now, what, of course, is going to be very interesting with all of this is what happens to the 4090 Ti. I suspect that NVIDIA can retain the performance crown, even with the V-Cache um, RDNA 3 based GPUs. I'm still trying to do a little bit of due diligence on the RDNA 3 V-Cache processors, sorry, GPUs. So I'll probably put out an update about that at some point soon. But I think that this is going to be a case of AMD and NVIDIA being a little, just basically competitive in different ways. Um, I've also been asked a lot on Twitter regarding FSR 3. So if you missed it, AMD did announce it. Um, I did leak that it was being worked on, but I absolutely knew no details, just that it was a thing. Um, I was very surprised, honestly, by the announcement. <laughs> I kind of like... I kind of thought that it was going to be just not discussed whatsoever and they were going to eventually reveal it some point next year. I figured early next year, the first quarter was my guess, but they didn't. And of course, they revealed it now with absolutely no details. They basically just said it could about double the performance of FSR 2. But again, they were very cagey on how it works. Now, I'm going to assume, and this is again an assumption I have not managed to verify this yet, so take this with absolutely no confidence, but I'm assuming that it kind of works in a similar manner to NVIDIA's DLSS 3 in terms of frame doubling. What that means for input latency, what that means for perceptive performance, I honestly don't know. For all I know, it could be doing something entirely different. They could have opened a quantum reality where you have like a free graphics card which is sending beams of data from space. I genuinely do not know how it works 100%. What I will say though, is that a source has told me that it does utilize the additional RDNA free instructions for machine learning. I don't think that's too surprising. They made a really big deal of it. I think it's like 2.7 times increase over the equivalent of RDNA 2. So it doesn't make sense for them not to utilize this. So the question is, does it work on RDNA 2 based products? And I think there are two obvious answers. The first is no. It is basically like DLSS free and it's locked behind a specific, you know, tier. So in this case, it would be RDNA free based GPUs because those additional instructions are required. Then again, there have been some mods, quote unquote, which allow DLSS free to work on RTX 30 cards, albeit with some glitches. I haven't done much research on that, but you can Google it yourself. It's quite interesting. Last time I looked, there were some visual glitches because I don't think the TensorFlow operations are working correctly. But again, do take that with a pinch of salt. I can't remember exactly what happened. So maybe they've improved it and now it works absolutely great on RTX 30 cards. Another potential is that it works more like XCSS. So if you're unfamiliar, XCSS is basically Intel's upsampling solution. And it can basically work um, using two instruction paths. The first is for the own ARC graphics cards. The second is it basically uses less precise operations. The visual quality goes down a little bit. The performance gains go down a little bit. But it means that A, it can work on non-ARC GPUs, uh, Alchemist GPUs. But it can also work on competitive hardware, for example, Radeon cards. I don't know whether AMD are going to take the same approach with FSR 3. I imagine that um, it, it's going to be an interesting discussion because potentially AMD could open up FSR 3 to work on competitive hardware, which would basically mean DLSS 3 would kind of get a kick in the shin because potentially it would work on NVIDIA hardware, work on Intel hardware. And we know that Intel have already confirmed via a roadmap uh, assuming they don't deviate from the roadmap, obviously at this point it looks like they're just going to be plowing straight forward, that uh, XCSS is going to have multiple iterations as well. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to be very interested to see how all of this works out, guys. And uh, yeah, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Um, I'm going to let you guys go. One, uh, actually, one other small thing. This is going to be not so much right now that you guys need to know this, but I'm just letting you know in case like, you don't watch a video for a few days. Um, I'm basically going to be swanning off to Germany for oh, how long am I going to be gone? Crap. Five days. Uh, I'm going to be gone mid next week, and I'll be back like Sunday. So um, I'll be back on like kind of producing content like on the monday so it's going to be just a quick trip just a personal thing like a small holiday um i've never been to germany before i'll be vis uh, visiting you know cliche place first berlin and seeing a few friends and then um, we'll be moseying on to do other things so yeah um it's going to be interesting trying to learn a little bit of german at the moment using uh, duolingo 
and uh i'm kind of at the point where i can recognize a few words and say a few sentences uh so you know that's kind of cool but um i'm certainly not as proficient as i hoped but um yeah it's gonna be interesting with that said take care of yourselves have an amazing day and stay safe bye for now